My son, I just mentioned to you, has been doing this kind of work too at this medical school where he is. He turned his attention recently to chronic kidney disease, just another disease. It's a serious problem. It's very costly, by the way. It's one of the real cost factors in medical care. 35 to 40 million people have chronic kidney disease, uh, even more if you count those with diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular disease, and hypertension. It's a big number. It's a big number, very worrisome. And it's actually been increasing in, in recent years. And the average cost per year, and how we bring in consideration of the cost of health care. People who have kidney disease, they're going on the verge or going to dialysis. That's a, that's a difficult proposition, I think all of you know. It costs, in the latest figures, the annual cost per year is $75,000 a year above Medicare, above Medicare costs. That breaks the banks for an awful lot of people and causes an awful lot of misery. So we're talking about a big deal. So he, he uh, as I said, Tom, um, had together and he followed closely, followed closely a 69-year-old man who was overweight. He had chronic kidney disease. He had type 2 diabetes. He had hypertension. I mean, he was sick, obviously. He was on the verge of going into dialysis. I said, I'll try it. So Tom got him and organized his diet and made sure he stayed with it, got to stay with it. And the results, and this was just published in the British Medical Journal, which is one of the top journal in medicine, quite frankly, of this kind. So it's getting some recognition in the medical community for this sort of approach. This man was on um, nine pharmaceuticals at the time he got into this, very sick. The incident was decreased from 210 units to 70 units in four days. See how fast it was? Five of the drugs, he dropped them within two months. He's off of five of his drugs, the incident dropped, and then for two more, the dose was halved. I mean, this is, this is stuff that's recorded. It's really watched over closely. It, it observes, you know, all the rules that we have to follow and should follow in doing a really good formal research. The big, big deal, Kidney disease, it depends on having a good glomerular filtration rate. That's the, that's the means by which the liquid is flowing through our kidneys you know, in good shape. And so this gentleman had a rate of flow, if you will, of 45, which is near, that's right, getting near stage four. That's, that's dialysis time. At 45, he increased it during that time from 45 to 74%. 73% and he felt just great after four and a half months. Chronic kidney disease, can you imagine that? Chronic kidney disease. Now, there are some observations made from time to time, anecdotal kinds of things, been, been, the claims have been made, but in this case, and the reason I want to point this out, is that this has been published in British Medical Journal. It was really a top journal. That's what we need to do in this business, is to get, do the research properly well and then get it into the system so that the professionals begin to understand this. I'll explain more in a moment what I mean by that. So I say nutrition of whole plant-based foods prevents and treats illness and disease outcomes. Both, involves prevention and treatment. Same formula. Same formula. It's just really amazing. So let me show you just to jump ahead here, jump around a little bit here. We, you know, we, we spend a lot of money in this country, as you all know, for health care. Big debate. We argue until it's silly at times. It's kind of foolish, these arguments we have. But here's a list of the amount of money we spend in 39 countries like us as of 2018 to 2019. These are recent figures. Here's how money, much money and, and drug costs we spend, per, the dollars per capita. Look where the U.S. is. We're way above all the others. Isn't that pretty amazing? Is that because we aren't literate in nutrition? What if we knew something about nutrition? What if we told the public about nutrition? What if they, a lot of people start doing what a lot of you folks are doing? Would health care costs go down? So we spend a lot of money. We also use the most pharmaceuticals of any country in the, in the world. By far, there we are, number one. We spend the most money, we, we use the most drugs, you know, some of us think this is the greatest system in the world because we do that. Again, why are we using drugs and not nutrition? 
So you say, what do, you get, what, what do we get for this? What do we get for this with all this money spent? Especially in the way in which it is spent. Life expectancy puts us way down the list, about 44th. How can we spend so much money and use so many drugs and get down there in, in life expectancy? Now, I know some of you are more, more familiar with the details of this kind of methodology. You'll say, wait a minute, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. But overall, the grand scheme of things, uh, our life expectancy is lower than most of those countries. Yet we spend by far and away the most money. When is it going to be time? When we're in the healthcare debate right now that's going on, when is it going to be time when people on either side of the aisle start talking about reducing health care costs by making people well? That's another whole discussion. That's another whole discussion that uh, I spent a lot of time in policy development, so I can sort of elaborate on that in a moment. But quite frankly, <laughs> the public's not being told. The public's not being told this. Again, nutrition literacy. Now let's move on to a couple more ideas, kind of big ideas. This goes back to some of my own research many years ago. Um, we, you know, we were using protein to turn on cancer not paying much attention to what kind of protein it was. We just got the protein, protein, protein. We were using casein, the main protein in cow's milk, to turn the, turn the cancer on. Coming from a dairy farm, that's a little bit uncomfortable <laughs> for a while. But in any case, we were using casein to turn it on. So we tried, one of my, a couple of my students actually got involved, and we checked out, out this system with soy protein. Soy protein doesn't do this. It's rather, simp it's rather representative of other plant proteins, too. Plant proteins don't have, seem to have this property. Either, in this case, very narrow. But it also has, plant proteins don't turn on the development of cholesterol in the blood, either. It doesn't turn on heart disease, either. So here we see a big distinction between animal proteins and plant proteins, and there is really, as a group, there are major differences between the two in the way they behave. Can't get into that because of time. So animal proteins promote disease formation more effectively than plant proteins in the form of whole food. 